Hey guys, Chunji here, and today I want to talk to you about the Dragoon job. Now, I've been getting a ton of requests for this guide, and since this job has been my main since release, I figured I'd show you how to maximize your DPS on your Dragoon, as well as teach you everything you'll need to know to play one effectively. This guide will cover single target rotations, burst rotations, how to AoE, cross class abilities, offensive cooldowns, defensive cooldowns, useful macros, and my opinion on stat prioritization. Alright, so Dragoon rotations are actually not too hard to remember. But to get the maximum DPS possible, I highly suggest you memorize the rotation that I'm about to give you. Now, it doesn't matter whether you start with a burst rotation or the standard rotation, you will always want to try and start from the flank, which is the side of the target, and use Heavy Thrust. The reason for this is because Heavy Thrust will increase your damage by 15%. This 15% damage increase will transfer to your other abilities and dots, which will greatly increase your overall effectiveness, making this skill one of, if not the most important ability on your hotbar. The standard rotation follows this combo. Heavy Thrust. Impulse Drive, Disembowel, Chaos Thrust, Phlebotomize, True Thrust, Vorpal Thrust, Full Thrust, and then Heavy Thrust. Now something to note about this rotation is that it assumes you'll be using these skills listed from the side that deals the most damage and also applies the bonus, such as the flank or the rear. If you are unable to apply the bonuses gained from Disembowel and Chaos Thrust, your rotation will look very different and consist almost purely of Phlebotomizes and True Thrust, Vorpal Thrust, Full Thrust combo. Though this rarely to never happen, so you should be able to apply all your bonuses at all times. Also, for the sake of this guide, Impulse Drive, Disembowel, and Chaos Thrust will be considered the Impulse Drive combo, and True Thrust, Vorpal Thrust, and Full Thrust will be considered the True Thrust combo. The last note for the sake of this guide is that Heavy Thrust will be considered its own combo, as well as Phlebotomize being its own combo as well. Another thing to be aware of is that as a Dragoon, it may be very difficult to apply these bonuses at all times due to AoEs and target continuously moving. If this does happen, do not freak out and think you must get your disemboweled debuff on the target before you can continue this rotation. Simply move on to phlebotomize or your true thrust combo until you know you'll be able to land your impulse drive from the target's rear. Now, impulse drive combo has a nifty trick that can be performed. This is the ability to switch targets after you land your impulse drive, but still apply disembowel to a different target. This can be extremely useful for those times when your target is about to die and disembowel debuff would go to waste on them. Or, for example, if there was a target about to spawn, such as Titan Summons, that needed to be bursted down quickly, you could set up your disembowel while waiting for them to be summoned by impaling Titan, then immediately as they spawn, disemboweling one of them, followed by a burst combo increasing your overall damage without wasting time on positioning yourself for an impulse drive. Something to keep in mind when trying to control your buffs and debuffs is this. If there's no bard in your party, prioritize Heavy Thrust over your impulse drive combo. However, if there is one or more bards in your group, prioritize your impulse drive combo over your heavy thrust so that your bard will have the maximum uptime on the disembowel debuff. Then simply use heavy thrust afterwards and continue your combos. People may debate me on this prioritization, but trust me, after extensive testing, the minor increase to your personal damage from placing heavy thrust up first will not outweigh the overall damage increase of your disembowel debuff with a bard in your group. Now, due to how long each debuff lasts on the target and how long your buffs last on you, you're going to want to use Heavy Thrust and Phlebotomize every 4th combo and your Impulse Drive combo every 6th combo. This way, you are not clipping any of the buffs or debuffs while fighting, which will net you the most DPS overall. However, this may change due to the boss mechanics making you move away from them, so just be aware of the buffs and debuffs that need to be refreshed and then refresh them accordingly. Alright, so now that you have the general understanding of the standard Dragoon rotation, I'll now show you how to increase your damage even further with a few different burst rotations that follow this order. Burst rotation 1 is when you have a few moments to set up before you actually need to burst your target. Open with your standard rotation of Heavy Thrust, Impulse Drive, Disembowel, Chaos Thrust, and then Phlebotomize. Now, this is where you'll start your burst rotation by using Blood for Blood and Internal Release into another Heavy Thrust, followed by True Thrust, Power Surge, Vorpal Thrust, Life Surge, Full Thrust, and then as soon as you cast Full Thrust, clip it by spamming your jump ability. This will ensure that you guarantee a crit from your Full Thrust and be able to land your jump before your global cooldown is finished. I generally use this burst rotation on static enemies or mini bosses like Chirata and Suparna in extreme mode to kill them quickly. You can also choose to add the following to the rotation to increase your burst and up your overall damage. Right after your jump lands, use True Thrust, Leg Sweep, Vorpal Thrust, Hellfire Dive, Bull Thrust, and then Spine Shatter Dive. You can do this entire rotation before your Heavy Thrust and Blood for Blood wears off. This is probably the highest and quickest burst damage in the game and should be used to quickly destroy things such as Super Bombs during Titan Extreme. Heck, you can even use this as an opener on a boss just to pick away at their health quicker. It's really up to you how you choose to use this burst, but these are just a few ideas on how I like to use them. 
Your second burst rotation simply ignores the setup and immediately begins with blood for blood and internal release. I use this for immediate threats that I cannot set up for such as conflags and dread knights in turn 5. Something very important to note is that dragoons have many skills that are not on the global cooldown, meaning they can be woven in between your skills to maximize your damage output. The first ones are your jumps. Thanks to 2.1, the animation for all jumps have been sped up so that weaving them in between your skills was quicker and a lot less dangerous. Your first jump skill is rightly called Jump. This skill has an attack potency of 200 and once finished will return you to your original location. This skill has a 40 second cooldown. If used properly, this can be super useful for times when you think you might die to knockbacks, such as on the giant wall boss in AK, or when facing Titan, since if you use it correctly you'll simply return to the location you jumped instead of ending up at the bottom of a ravine. Your second jump skill is Spine Shatter Dive. This skill has an attack potency of 170 and will also stun the target for 2 seconds. This sits on a 90 second cooldown. Now never use this skill when you're fighting bosses that need to be stunned for some other reason such as Ifrit or ADS in turn 2, or you could cause your raid to wipe. The last jump you have that does damage is Dragonfire Dive. This skill has an attack potency of 250 and will damage all enemies nearby. The cooldown for this skill is 3 minutes so use it sparingly. This is an amazing AoE that should be used for massive bursts or to kill large amounts of enemies such as the feathers on Garuda. Now the last ability that's off the global cooldown and does damage is Leg Sweep. This skill has an attack potency of 130 and will stun the target for 3 seconds. Use the same rule for stunning as you do with Spine Shatter Dive and you'll be fine. Though unlike Spine Shatter Dive, this skill should always be used when it's off cooldown if the stun will not negatively affect your party. However, not only do you have these four skills that do damage on, not on your global cooldown, but you also have two skills that will buff upcoming attacks that do not sit on the global cooldown either. The first one is Life Surge. This skill ensures critical damage for the first non-magic action used while Life Surge is active. Damage dealt will be absorbed as HP, up to 10% of your maximum HP. This lasts for 10 seconds or until consumed. Life Surge is probably one of my favorite skills simply because it allows me to guarantee a crit on my next ability and heal me for a decent amount of health. I can't tell you how many times this skill has saved me from dying due to the heal that it grants. The final skill that is off the global cooldown and will help you with damage is Power Surge. This skill increases the damage dealt by a single jump or spine shatter dive by 50%. This effect lasts 10 seconds or until consumed. That means this skill only affects skills named jump and the skill named spine shatter dive. It will not increase the damage for dragon fire dive. Alright, onto the AoE rotations. You can do one of two rotations. The first rotation follows this pattern. Heavy Thrust, Ring of Thorns, Doom Spike Spam until 500 TP, Invigorate, and then Doom Spike Spam until 500 TP once again. This rotation is the standard rotation I use for AoEing things like the first pull of turn 4. This will destroy your TP pool and should not be used to the extent that you end with a 0 TP or you'll be out of the fight for quite a while until your TP regenerates. The reason I have Doom Spike Spam stop at 500 TP is because this is the lowest amount of TP you can get to and continue the boss fight without hitting 0 TP before Invigorates up once again. Make sure you pay attention to your TP usage or you'll cause more issues for your party later on in the fight. This is a straight line AoE rotation so if you have multiple targets around you, you may want to use rotation 2. The second AoE rotation is as follows. Heavy Thrust, Ring of Thorns until 500 TP, Invigorate, and then Ring of Thorns until 500 TP again. This combo does a lot less damage than the first combo, but it also costs a lot less TP, which will help you sustain your AoE. This rotation is well suited for when multiple enemies are surrounding you and you cannot get them all lined up for rotation 1. Next is the cross class abilities. The two classes Dragoon pulls their cross class abilities from are the Pugilist and the Marauder. Some of these skills are mandatory and should be picked up immediately regardless of the other skills you decide to choose. The first skill I find mandatory is Second Wind. This is an instant cast ability that has a cure potency of 650. I generally see it here for between 800 and 1100 health at max level. Second Wind sits on a 2 minute cooldown and is received once obtaining level 8 as a pugilist. The reason I find this to be mandatory is because this should be one of the first skills you pop when taking unhealable AoE damage. One case of this is if you get hit by weight of the land and then stomps come while you're still at low HP. This will relieve the stress on your healers and heal you for a moderate amount of health, potentially saving your life. The second mandatory skill is internal release. This increases your critical hit rate by 10% and lasts for 15 seconds. This has a 60 second cooldown and is received at level 12 of a pugilist. Internal release is a fantastic skill even though the increase to critical hit rate is only 10%. This is mandatory because it will increase your overall damage output by a fair amount and the more damage you can get the better, especially for places like turn 5 of the Binding Cold Bahamut. 
The next two skills are not mandatory, but I highly, highly suggest you attempt to get these in to increase your viability even more. The first highly recommended skill comes from the pugilist at level 42. It's Mantra, which increases HP recovery via Cure Magic by 5% for self and nearby members. This has a 15 second duration. Now Mantra is one of, if not the best utility skill in the entire game, other than Ballad. Most people will say that 5% is not enough to warrant leveling a pugilist to level 42 for, but I can tell you from experience, 5% is much, much better than 0%, especially in those cheat clinching moments where the next heal may or may not save you from that next hit. I've literally seen Mantra cause a healer to heal for 50 more HP, and then that player who received the heal dropped to 15 HP on the next hit. This skill can and does save lives, even if the percentage seems too low to matter. Do not take this skill for granted. The final highly suggested skill is Mercy Stroke. Mercy Stroke delivers an attack potency of 200. This skill can only be executed when the target's HP is at 20% or below. If delivered as a killing blow, you receive up to 20% of your maximum HP back. This skill is on a 90 second cooldown. I absolutely love this skill. I've seen it crit for 800 damage and it does not sit on the global cooldown, meaning you can continue your combo and use this skill in between your other skills to finish off a target quicker. You can get this skill by leveling a Marauder to 26. All the other cross-class abilities are very mediocre and can be interchanged freely. The only ones that are absolutely worthless for the Dragoon and have no purpose in their rotations is Skull Sunder, Fracture, and Haymaker. The other cross-class abilities are not terrible and can be picked up if you do not have one of the other mandatory or highly suggested skills. To get all the mandatory and highly suggested skills for the Dragoon, you will need to level Pugilist to 42 and Marauder to 26. Although, if you choose not to pick up Mantra, you can simply level your Pugilist to 12 and receive the other mandatory skills. As stated previously, the Dragoon's offensive cooldown should generally be used at the beginning of your burst rotation or interlace in between your highest hitting skills. The only other cross-class ability that a Dragoon uses for increased damage is internal release. If it wasn't for this one skill, the Dragoon would be 100% self-sustained when it comes to their offensive cooldowns. As for defensive cooldowns, Dragoons are very limited and only have two that they do not take from other classes. The first is Keen Flurry, which increases parry rate by 80%. This lasts for 20 seconds on a 90 second cooldown. I find this skill super underwhelming and rarely sees any use when in high level dungeons. The only time I truly see use is if I accidentally pull aggro or if I'm soloing. Even then, it barely sees any use. The last Dragoon defensive cooldown is Elusive Jump, which executes a jump to a location 15 yalms behind you, while removing heavy and bind effects. This skill also reduces Emity and sits on a 3 minute cooldown. I really really enjoy this skill for the simple fact that it looks great and everyone enjoys a backflip or two. But in all seriousness, I actually do use this skill quite often in raids and other endgame content when I pull aggro or to escape a boss's mechanic, such as when Tintania summons a Dread Knight. This skill should not be overlooked and can save your life more than once if used properly. Now when it comes to Dragoons and stat prioritization, this is the order in which you should stack them in. Strength, actually to 480. Determination, Critical Hit Rate, and then Skill Speed. Now, the reason you stop at 480 accuracy is because if you have anything less, you'll miss attacks in turn 5 of Binding Cold Bahamut, which could mean the difference between Twintani and Raging and Twintani dying. Trust me, I quite literally just killed Twintani, and had I missed a single attack there at the end, her enrage would have wiped us, instead of us killing her 2 seconds before her etheric perfusion went off. The final topic I'd like to talk to you about is Macros. More requests come in for Dragoon macros than anything else, so I figured I'd show you a few of my favorites. The first macro I use, and my favorite, is the one that pops all my buffs. If you've noticed my hotbar, you'll see a pinkish one that has the icon of Infuriate. That is my buff popping macro, and it is set up like this. The first line is backslash AC space quotation mark blood for blood quotation mark space less than symbol me greater than symbol. Then on line two, backslash wait space one. You need this here unless you want to continuously smash in the macro to cast the next buff, and sometimes by smashing it, it will actually cast the second one instead of the first one, and it just causes issues, so just put the wait one here and let it cast both for you. The third line is backslash AC space quotation mark internal release quotation mark space less than symbol me greater than symbol. If done correctly, you should just press this once, wait for about a second, and both your buffs will be on you at the same time. This makes it a lot easier to control how many spots are taken up on your hotbar. My second favorite macro is my impulse drive combo. Line one is backslash AC space quotation mark impulse drive quotation mark space less than symbol T greater than symbol. Followed by on line two backslash weight space 
2.5 because my global cooldown is closer to 2.5 seconds than 2 seconds so that's why you need to wait 2.5 here now line 3 is backslash ac space quotation mark disembowel quotation mark space less than symbol t greater than symbol then on line 4 is another wait 2.5 and the last line is backslash ac space quotation mark chaos thrust quotation mark space less than symbol t greater than symbol the only downside to this macro is if your recast time is below 2.5 you'll be wasting time waiting for your next skill to go off when you could have just done it manually which could have saved you approximately one second in total the choice is up to you whether you want to use this min max method or not but in practice it really doesn't increase your damage by a significant margin so i find this macro to be useful when trying to fit all of your skills onto your hotbar well guys that's all i have for you when it comes to dragoons please feel free to like favorite subscribe and share this video for more final fantasy content also don't forget to follow me on facebook and twitter where i post upcoming content and also answer all your final fantasy 14 questions thanks again guys and i'll see you next time